I'm with Jacqueline Madogo, who's a track athlete that formerly competed at Guelph University, but this year competed in the 2024 Paris Olympics in track and field. Jacqueline, what is it like for you to kind of make that transition from soccer into track? And why did you choose Guelph University to do that? I was actually at a turn at a soccer tournament and the assistant coach on car ended up emailing, finding my email and he emailed me and he was like, oh, we're having this like showcase. I think you should come out. Like we saw you play, like I participated in their showcase and like I, at first I was like, oh my God, it's really small. Like, I don't know if I would like this. I don't know if like, it's like my vibe. When I started talking to the coaches more, I got to know the head coach Shane, and then I got to know Ankar a little bit more, and then Al, and I was like, oh my God, these people are incredible. And then I, they brought me back for like an official visit, and that's when I was like, oh, I'm, I'm coming here. Like, it's a sealed deal. Like, this is, this is it. This is where I'm gonna spend the next four years. It feels like I wasn't just going to the school. I was really like embraced into the community, and that's how it feels today. So you made the transition from soccer to track. It's a pretty big change. Can you tell us a little bit about what the moment was like for you where you're like, okay, I'm going to I'm going to pursue track. Shane, who was the head coach for soccer, he kind of found out that I did track but I, in high school, but I only did it for one year. I ended up meddling at offside and he found out all out. And um, he introduced me to Jason, who's the now current head coach of the track and field team. And um, my first year, um, I couldn't participate into track because I got a really bad ankle injury after um, soccer season. And then I came back my second year try to like do track and field and um at first i was like a i was on trial so like he didn't know if i was gonna stay on the team or not i ended up having a pretty good season and um made the youth sports roster medal that youth sports that year and we had a conversation and i remember this um he was basically saying that i there's a lot of opportunity in track for me right now because i'm so new for soccer, like my ceiling had capped, like I was gonna play four years of soccer and then kind of move on. But um, there was an opportunity in track and field where I could make national teams, I could travel the world doing track and I could just ex like explore this new um, environment. Over the years, I've kind of found my own place and I've found um, who I am as not not only like as an overall person but also as an athlete and then you get to compete in the olympics and represent your country at such a high level what what was it like for you to realize in that moment like i'm gonna actually go there and compete and start training for that big event i knew it could have been a possibility like a lot of people around me we're like, you can make this team. Like, it's super attainable. When I found out that I made it, I was actually at practice. I just got, like, saw the email and I just, like, kind of just closed it and put it, my phone back and just went about practice for, like, the next four hours. <laughs> I didn't want to, like, start, like, celebrating or, like, doing anything because we were in the middle of practice and distracting people and, like, drawing attention. So I kind of just, like, put my phone down and just, like, went about my business, finished practice. But once I got home, like the first people I called were my parents. We spent about two weeks in Barcelona for training camp with track and field. Finally, when we like stepped foot in Paris, I was like, okay, it's starting. We're here. Like, it's not just in my head anymore. Like, we're actually physically here. I wanted to enjoy the moment and just like enjoy the environment I was in. Can you describe for me, like close your eyes and picture it for us right now, the feeling of walking onto the track with everybody watching you at the Olympics. What was that like? It was the most like electrifying thing. Like as soon as you walk in, there's 80,000 people, just like not a single like morning session, evening session, it was packed. And it was like some sessions would start like in the morning at like 9 a.m. and the stadium would be full. So it was like a amazing feeling just having that much support, that many fans just be interested in track and field. Like, although there was 80,000 people, I was just so happy to like be there. And I was just like smiling, like from ear to ear. Like everyone was like, were you even nervous? Cause you were smiling so much on camera. I was like, honestly, like I was having so much fun. I was like, these people care so much about track. It's amazing. So you participated in the 200 meter race and had a personal best time as you were going into the semifinals. What was that like? Did you know that it was a 
personal best as it was happening? Or did you find out just like eventually later on? When we did the for the prelims, I PB'd and I was like already like on top of the moon. Like I was like on top of the world. I just, I was so happy. Like I got fourth in my heat and it's top three that moved on. So then I had to do the repechage run, but like I didn't even care. I was like, I PB'd. Like what, like what else can I ask for? And then coming back the next day and like PBing again, I was like, what is going on here? And it's really hard to PB back to back days. Like my body is like not fresh. Going into Paris, like my coach, Jason and I were just talking and he was like, honestly, like the goal is to try to make the semis. Anything can happen to make a final. So once I was in like in the semis, I was like, okay, just try to go for it. And unfortunately I didn't make the final, but I wasn't, um, I wasn't really upset. Like, yes, I would have loved to make the final, but um, it just wasn't my time. And I know my time's coming, but um, I had a great run, like doing my individual events. Like it was amazing just getting to the semis for the 200 and maybe next time we'll make the final. So you were part of the women's relay team and you finished six and you also had a national record with that team. You're a soccer girl, so you're used to being on a team. What was it like for you though, to participate in the relay team? Can you kind of tell me a little bit about that experience as well? Going to the semis, we, I knew, I literally texted my coach the night before and I was like, we need to run the Canadian record to make the finals. Like I just said, like, before we went in, I was like, guys, like we win as a team, we lose as a team. Like, when the race finished and we were waiting and we saw the time, um, I think I was the, like, I think I was the only one that realized that we had broken the Canadian record because I knew it. It was like engraved in my head what the time was. So then I started like celebrating and the girls were like, why are you celebrating? Because we're still waiting if we we're a small queue. I was like, guys, we just broke the Canadian record. I'm like, they were like, oh, like, hey. <laughs> and then we got the small queue. Like, as soon as I finished that sentence, we got the small queue to like go to the finals. And then, like, everything just erupted and we all like started celebrating. We have such great staff like Charles, Fabrice, Gunroy, and like our IST. Like, they really, really helped us like take it from the ground up and um, they never gave up. So what is it like for you to be a U sports athlete, you know, competing in the Olympics and being able to represent not only Canada, but Canadian athletics and Canadian education as well? I am the first one to say like, there's really good opportunities in youth sports. There's very good opportunity in the Canadian education system. I knew in my heart that I wanted to be in Canada. I wanted my parents to have easy access to just drive to games, drive to meets. I also think that like growing sports in Canada, we can, if we keep the talent in Canada, it can definitely be um, something where we um, are proud of and something where we can be very competitive and a lot of people already say like Guelph is probably the track and field powerhouse of Canada. I went to the Olympics with two other people from the team. We have one Paralympian who just medaled today. So there is a lot of talent and especially for us uh, Guelph, there is a lot of talent in track and field. So if we try to stick together and stick into youth sports, um, I think we'll, we'll do amazing things. I do have to ask you about the Olympic muffin out of curiosity. Did you eat it? Did you <laughs> hear about it at the time? I'm not a chocolate person at all. Like I don't like chocolate, but I, I ate it and it just tasted like chocolate cake. But one of my friends who loved chocolate, she was like, this is chocolate cake. People like that love chocolate gave it a nine. So if any U sports athlete or high school athlete wants to do what you've done, whether that's transitioning from one sport to another or competing in the Olympics, what advice would you have to give them? Coming into university, I was very close-minded and this curveball came along and I had to be open-minded. And now in life, everything, I just keep an open mind. You never know what can happen. You never know where things can lead you. I don't think when I came in in university that I was gonna make the 2024 Olympics. I don't think that was in my radar. Just take every opportunity that comes knocking, honestly. Um, it's just, A, it helps you grow as a person and B, you get a cool experience out of it. So I just say, keep your mind open and just embrace everything that comes your way.